In this lesson, we're going to continue our exploration of workflow. In particular, we're going to look at how we can define additional behavior for a workflow using global and conditional rules. In the earlier lessons, we looked at how we could create a workflow using a primary rule and then a transitional rule so we can move a workflow from initial creation through the different steps of a workflow in a linear progression. We're going to take this idea and so we can see how we can move through from uh, our workflow to introduce the idea of a global rule available at any particular point within the workflow and then a, a conditional rule that will allow us to uh, move on to uh, the next step but with a choice of potentially different outcomes and different sets of behavior as we do it. So to do this, let's let's start back inside our workflow. And what we're going to do here is we're going to edit this workflow and add in a type of rule called a global rule. Now a global rule is one that is available at any potentially available at any point within the workflow. Uh, so I'm going to add in a new workflow. I could clone one of the existing workflow rules if I wanted to, uh, but actually this is going to be a very different rule. Uh, so uh, this is going to be a reassign, which is going to allow me to uh, reassign the values of uh, the uh, who it's assigned to and also the team. And in order to do that, I'll mark this as a global rule and I'll enable this. And what I'll do now is just save this rule. And what we should see is that the rule has become available in the uh, workflow attached to the start state and because work, this is the, the representation of a global rule. So our little workflow rule has to have some actions associated with it. I move down to the bottom of the screen so I can add in the workflow actions and here I want to be able to display uh, fields for amendment and the two fields that I want to display are the as opportunity assigned to and I'll make that a required field and show that first and I also want to display for editing channel ID and so I'll have that as a required field as well. So I'm only including these two fields and I will then save this and I'll make the workflow available. So this should have changed my workflow screens for the opportunity. You can see this is the, the workflow that we're, we were using in the previous lesson and we now have a reassign button. What we can do to further uh, change this is to ensure that we are able to control exactly who has access to the reassign button. Some people may want to be able to uh, change details with inside uh, an opportunity. For example, if I click change now as, as a standard user, you can see that there are certain fields which are only changeable through workflow. And that's the idea. That, that's something that uh, affects the four entities covered by the uh, opportunity progress behavior. So that's opportunity, leads, cases, and solutions. They all work in this way with a lockdown status area, which is only changeable by workflow. And so it might be a little bit cheeky if somebody came along and said, ah, tell you what, I want to be able to, to uh, change items here. I want to be able to progress this. I want this to be my opportunity. Shouldn't I be able to just reassign it to myself? So they might be able to see it. And it would be bad if, if anyone could reassign it to themselves. You might want to control and say, well, only certain people can reassign it. And what we can do to do that, to insist and control on exactly who has access to the reassign button, is to use either the idea of the restriction to team, so only those people in a particular team can see this button, or we can use a JavaScript condition. And here I'm going to use a little JavaScript condition, which is going to say, well, the actual current user has to be the person to whom the opportunity is assigned. So I'm going to use this little bit of JavaScript here, back inside and drop that into the JavaScript condition. So only if you are the assigned user can you uh, access this. And I can choose save and I activate my workflow now and back inside here uh, you can see that you can see it's assigned to Susan May and I'm logged on as Susan May. So if I uh, choose to access this as a different user if I log on as Brian Little 
and I navigate off to look at Gatecom. I can see down at the opportunities. I can see test one, but I can't access the reassign button because the behavior that I've implemented here means that the uh, button is not available to me. Now the next behavior that we have to uh, implement is the idea of a conditional rule. And a conditional rule is a single rule type, but it allows two sets of behavior with two possible outcomes. And we express this uh, in a very similar way uh, to a transition rule. So back inside my system, I'm going to edit my workflow. I'm going to go into the qualify rule. I'm going to make this rule available for cloning because it's a transition rule and we've got lots of the fields already marked as display field for amendment. So I can choose save. The next thing that I'll do is to create my new rule, which is going to be a clone of the qualify rule. And I'm going to call this rule uh, my uh, progress oppo and uh, I will mark this as an enabled rule so it can be then brought into the system so I'll save that although it's been cloned it's been cloned as a transitional rule and I need to change that to being a conditional rule so now we see it split so we see it being split across into a conditional rule with workflow actions when it's true and workflow actions when it's false. If I save this, you can see uh, this is what I mean by having two potential sets of actions and two paths uh, in behavior. So for the progress oppo when it's true, I want us to take us to the quoted workflow step. And when it's false, I want to go to the demo workflow step. And in here, with inside uh, the uh, behavior, what we can do is we can start to uh, add in some additional workflow action. So very similar, I'm just going to have to uh, run through this. The workflow stage, I'll correct first of all, this to set column value, proposal submitted, so it's quoted, and anything else which is a set value, I'll leave, I'll leave all the other fields. Now here, for the uh, new action when false, I will set column value to be the workflow stage, and that's going to be demo, and that's going to be read only order one, and then quickly add in the other fields. So these are display fields for amendment, opportunity status, and I'll mark that as read only order two. Then the next one is going to be the certainty, so I'm very quickly able to do these. Let's add in forecast, and that should go in as uh, required, and that's order three. And then new action when false, um, I shall add in display field for amendment, and this has got to be the assigned user ID, which is, again, read only, position five, but that has to be on a new line. So display field for amendment, and this is the channel ID, display field for amendment, and then priority and then the close by date. So we've we've got exactly, it looks very similar. The only thing that is principally different here at this point are the two values being set. Um, I do want to do an additional behavior, uh, which is to create a task. I want to automatically tell the user to do something. At this point, the reason for the split is that um, I want to have two possible paths depending on whether or not the opportunity is of a particular type. So if it's a service request, and that could go straight forward to quotation, if it is a, a license sale or a longer consultancy sale or a mixed sale, then you'll need to progress to um, a demo and an explanation of the services that are provided. And here we can have the JavaScript condition. So we've got our check to see which type of service we are, and are we in, if we're in the service type, then uh, it's true and we will follow the behavior down here. Anything else, it will follow the false behavior. So it's the false behavior to which I want to add a reminder that um, I've got to schedule a meeting for the demo. So I've got to create a task for myself. And in here, um, I just want to be able to uh, mark this as so contact customer to 
uh, create demo and I can bring in information from the uh, opportunity so oppo description and I can bring in information from the company as well so you can see that I've merged in fields this is similar to the merge fields that you would uh, use inside email templates which are discussed in other lessons I can then uh, assign this uh, to a particular person and so I'm going to use here the oppo uh, assigned user ID and I want to create this automatically and so I'm going to put this as uh, hidden and it will be added in automatically behind the scenes I can choose other items if I want to, so I could have marked this with a particular status or priority if I wanted to, and I could even have on-screen reminders if I wanted to as well. But I'll leave it like this as it is, choose save, I'm going to save this and I'm going to activate my workflow. To allow me to test this, I need to switch over into my uh, user. Now you'll notice my type at the moment has not been set, so if I say progress, it will not be a service request, it would go down the false approach but if I change this so that it's type service and I click on progress oppo uh, you could see that it's starting to uh, go straight forward to the proposal submitted phase so that's the quoted phase uh, but if I cancel that and change the type of opportunity to say a consulting sale and I progress opportunity now we can see that it's uh, moving it on to the demo phase and in fact if I save this uh, we can see that uh, it has created for us as well a communication and uh, what we can do inside here is we can see that it is reading and has merged in the information as well for the opportunity from the opportunity to build the uh, communication. So our workflow that we've evolved has now ended up matching uh, the workflow that we had wanted to create uh, right at the beginning. So we've looked in these lessons at how we can create an opportunity using a primary rule, using a transition rule to move us on through the process, a global rule that allows change to data anywhere within the system and uh, we've also seen how we can use a, a, tr a conditional rule to allow us to split our processes uh, based on the value of data inside the record.